Hello, and welcome to my second devlog for Wave the Droplet. Um, so, this is just a thing that I'm doing to try and keep track of all of my uh, devlog stuff. And I'm actually going to show you how I, how I put these together. Um, so... Basically, I go off of this text document, right? So, I show off the stuff I already did, right? So I can keep track of everything. I go over what I did in between devlogs to hope to show them in devlogs. And I have 10 goals in total. Well, 10 goals in total per rotation. So, how this is going to work is I'll take maybe one, two, three of the, those goals and put them in here for the devlog, right? If I don't finish them all, they're out of the devlog and they're going to be for some devlog in the future. I'm not going to hold myself deadlines for any of these things. Um, some th goals are going to take more priority over others because I have school and I need to do my schoolwork. So, open my project, and I'm going to go to my scene. This, uh, all of these right here, um, the little, uh, little tile maps, uh, those are open source. I got them from opengameart.com. Um, I'll actually link the person's, uh, name in the description of this video. So that more people could like maybe look at the stuff that they make, um, because I really like this tile map for the for, the, and I'm I'm thinking of using this tile map in f the future for whenever I make other uh, platformers. Anyway, so right here I'm actually gonna go to my player class. Right here is Wade. This is what Wade's gonna look like, and I'll and I'll actually just show the the picture on uh don't file manager you know open it get a zoom in this is wade right here as you can see he takes clear inspiration from sonic and a little bit of rayman and kirby um that's what i've been doing um this dev vlog is a little bit short. I have done little things because I have been focusing a little bit too much on the. I've been focusing a little bit too much on the um, on the sprites so that I can finally give a visual representation instead of uh, little cubes. So the, now we have this. We have the player. We have a collision shape, and we have. Well, they're supposed to have collision shape, but this is supposed to be a hitbox, basically, for the hazards. And I'm thinking of changing this into a hitbox for both hazards and enemies. Um, No, wait, just for hazards, because hazards instantly kill you versus enemies where they're going to give you damage. I haven't made any health yet. I'm going to save that for the future. Anyway, these things right here... The spikes. Um, I've added an area, a hitbox for uh, the spikes, and it's only so that the player can detect it. Alrighty. So, if you want to look at the code, the boring stuff, uh, this is it. You gotta like pause the video to see what happens. I basically took the regular, the regular. Um, character body the regular character body uh the regular character body um movement script um in the future when i make platformers i'm probably gonna make it from scratch from then on but i had to do this in order to learn the c sharp side of godot because i'm doing this all in c sharp 
because I'm coding in Java right now, and I do not want to switch in between two different types of languages. Well, I mean, they are different languages, but yeah, so that's point. Anyway, so I'm going to show you the thing in action. So if we look back at my code, I added a... I added a um I added a dash button, right? So I added um if the speed is less than a thousand point zero, I a thousand floating point number, and the input is of uh, dash is pressed, um then the speed um just add to the speed. Right, and he goes faster and faster and faster until he reaches a thousand. Right, um, and I added this boolean because after the dash is pressed, when it's let go, I thought of adding a little skid where he would go a little further and then stop, so that you can perfectly time like jumps, running, sprinting, all that. I'm trying to make it so that you can get to the level as as fast as possible and just have really tight controls instead of having to operate mainly on a Mario ice level. So, yeah. Alrighty. So, now that I explained what I did and what I've added, and um, I have made other sprites. Like, for example, I have made the cola bottle right here. Um, I haven't added him. Hold on. I'm going to going to change the visibility so that he can be seen. All right. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to add him later, but he's going to be our first enemy. So from then on, when you see this guy again, you're going to see enemy stuff, right? So enough of that. Delete node. Yes. All right. So time to get the actual thing going. So, I, as you can see, uh, he's uh, sliding a little bit. He's not running yet because I'm not done with the running animation nor the walking animation. But I plan on getting that done for the next one. So, uh, I'm just going to show you. I can jump over this. I'm going to use my dash button to go faster. Yeah. Dash button, dash button, dash button. Goes fast. Right? Normally he goes at this speed. And then I'll jump on the spike. There we go. Game over. Right? Of course, uh, for next devlog, I am going to add more. I would like to add more UI. If I don't, then I don't. Because I can't tell if my schedule is very, uh, very hectic as it is. So... Uh, doing this on top of everything else um, I might not get a lot of UI done, but at least I would want to get an enemy done and Maybe one of the animations for one of the sprites in here um But yeah, um, and I know I said in last devlog in the description and in the comments um that I am going to be doing this every Wednesday I'm going to switch that to every Sunday because Sundays are weekends. It's easier to get a time to get um, a bunch of video stuff together uh, for um, the day. And it's just I, it's my only free time that I really have that I can just get all my homework and stuff done in the middle of the week get all my studying done in the middle of the week and then on the weekends I work on the game in there. So yeah. Uh after that, um see you next time. And um yeah.